All right, so here's a video to help you with the Unit 4 test review. I am going to just do some random chosen problems here, uh, randomly selected problems on your review packet. Most of you already started and um, did quite a few in class already. We did some of these in class, but I'm going to do it again here on the video so you can try to follow along slowly and pause it if you need to, use your calculator if you need to. I have a calculator right here next to me so I can show you how to do negatives if you need to. Um, I want you to relieve all the stress that you that possibly can when it comes to calculation, uh, negative times negative, so use your calculator if you need to, okay? Um, so I gave you this unit for review worksheet for home. This is a perfect practice for the test. If you can go through this review packet, plus your quiz, and plus your practice test, all of those three things, go through and make sure you understand it. Do some more practice. Uh, go through your homework worksheets. Then you'll be prepared for the test. So here, let's do some randomly selected questions here, what I think it was um, the most frequently asked questions. Okay? So it says, which graph best represents the system? So when I look at the equation, first I try to recognize what form do we have here. There's only, uh, in this test, I notice that the only two forms we're using. Now here's my little scratch paper I like to have next to me. The form, the two forms we are using here of a line is y equals mx plus b, or we're using the ax plus by equals c. Okay, so put that as a little note on the side. I either recognize the y equals mx plus b, which is the slope. I need to look at the slope and the y-intercept, okay? is either in slope y-intercept form or it is in standard. This is called the standard form, standard. And in the standard form, if something it is in this form, I'll always do a little table trying to find my x and my y-intercept. If I want the x-intercept, I plug in a 0 for y. I'm trying to find the x, so I plug in a 0 for y. And if I'm, if I'm trying to find the y-intercept, I plug in a 0 for x. So I'm trying to find the y, I'll plug in a 0 for x. So that is what I see when I see something in standard form. When I see something in uh, slope y-intercept form, I just have to identify what is the value of b and what is my slope, which is rise over run, or if it is negative, we drop and then run. Okay, so those are pretty much the things that I always have in my mind because this whole unit is about linear, it's about lines. So it's either in one form or the other, okay? So I'm going to keep that by my side. You should keep that by your side and always be in the lookout. Now let's go back to question number one. Okay, I'm going to keep here, right here by your side. You should keep it. When I look at this, I say, well, y is by itself. I see something times x plus 1. So this is in the slope y-intercept form. The next equation is also in slope y-intercept form. So let's identify the slope and the y-intercept for the first one. So for the top one, I need a line that it is on the y-intercept of 1 and that it is the slope is dropping 3 and running 1. So let's see if we can find which one of these has that. Um, this one right here does not have a line with the y-intercept of 1. So I'm not going to even look at that. This one over here does not have a line with the y-intercept of 1, so I'm not going to even look at that. This one, it does have a line with the y-intercept of 1, right there. And then it drops 1, 2, 3, and run 1, right there. So immediately, out of those three choices, the letter C is the only graph that matches with my equation number 1. So I already know that this is the right answer, because this one, other two, doesn't even have my first line. So the correct answer would be C. Okay? I don't even have to check the second one because this is the only graph that has the correct equation number one. All right? So let's check for equation number two. The, the y-intercept, this one right here, the y-intercept would be a negative four, which it is right here, negative four. 
and the slope for the second one is up to, because it's positive 2, and run 1. So up 2 and run 1. So there we go. This is the correct graph. All right. But as you can see, I only checked it for the top one, and this is already the only graph that has the correct top one equation. All right. Let's go to the next one. Which coordinate represents the solution of the system of equations? Now let's talk about solutions of system of equations here on our little scratch paper. If I want to find a solution for a system of equation, first I graph the system. Okay, We graph the system and let me make one up here just to talk about solutions. I'm going to make up this little dotted line, dashed line, and this is the y um, let me do greater than x. So this is the y is greater than x. That means because it's greater, I want everything that is above. Then that means I would shade right above it. Okay. Notice that I did not make a solid line because I do not have the equal. So this is the shaded area. That means if I want to find a solution to this, I would have to pick anything in my shaded area. I could pick any point in my shaded area and it would make this statement true. I could pick um, 1, 0, 2, 0. I could pick negative 1, 1. Anything in the shaded area will be true statement. Okay? I could pick a 2, 3. Okay? Let's see if that is true as long as it's in my shaded area. This is 2 for x, 3 for y. This is 2, comma, 3. Is it true when I plug in a 3 for y, is that greater than 2 for x? Is 3 greater than 2? Yes, it is. And it works if you pick any point in the shaded area. Okay. So when we want a solution to a system, we want to pick something in the shaded area. How do I check it? By plugging it in. Okay. So you check by plugging the point x comma y into the inequality. So as you can see, I picked a point and then I plugged it in into my inequality. I substituted a y for a number 3 and an x for a number 2 and it is a true statement. So that is how you check to see if a solution is part of an inequality. So let's go back to our problem over here. Which coordinate represents the solution of the system of equations? So I have the system given to me, and they give me all these choices. I have absolutely no other way to approach this by to um, no other way than to plug it in each of the solutions until I get one right. So I'm going to start with the point A. X is negative two, and Y is three. I'm going to go to the top one. The top one would be. 2 times a negative 2 plus 4 times a 3, which is y, does that equal 8? Let's see. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 4 times 3 is 12. And a negative 4 plus a 12, if you are confused and you're not sure what to do, here's your calculator. Okay? You can do negative 4, push the negative, Okay, 4 and the negative, negative 4 plus a 12. Enter, and that gives you an 8. Okay, so negative 4 plus 12 does give you an 8. It works. But I can't only check it once. Okay, that's equation number 1. I have to also check it on equation number 2. So I'm going to check it on equation number 2. I'm going to plug in a negative 2 for x. So it would be 5 times a negative 2 plus the y, which is a 3, does that equal a negative 7? Let's check it. Now again, if you are afraid and you're not sure how to do it, let's do it in the calculator. Uh, put in the number 2 and then make a negative by pushing the negative button. Okay. So let me start again. I put in the number 2 and then I push the negative number. And let me multiply that times 5. That gives you negative 10. And then you add the 3 and you get a negative 7. So if you are afraid to do it in your mind, do it in the calculator. This is negative 10 plus a 3, which it does equal negative 7. So as you can see, I barely just started with the letter A, and you already work for both. 
So the correct answer is letter A. Now, let's pretend that if A failed, then I would do the same exact thing with B. I would try number, uh, letter B, the point X and Y, and if you fail, then I would try letter C. So we got lucky here, and the very first point already worked. Don't go around randomly. Just start with A, then move on to B, then move on to C. Okay? So A already worked. You're going to be doing exactly the same thing on, on number three, so I'm going to let you try it for yourself. I, I decided not to do this question here because this is something that requires a lot of explanation in class. So we've done it in class, and I'll do it again if you need to. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and do a few other ones here. Which inequality is shown uh, on the graph below? Name a point in the solution set. So I want a point in the shaded, in the shaded area. Okay, so that is an easy question to, at least that part should be easy, to pick something from the shaded area. That's the whole reason why we shaded, to make it the location of where we want to pick our solutions. Now, again, which form is this? Uh, the, the line is in the form of mx plus b, y something equals or less than or greater than mx plus b. So let's look at the y-intercept first. Take a look at this, uh, this line over here. It's a dashed line, and the y-intercept is a positive 4. I can see that it's touching at 1, 2, 3, 4. The y-intercept is a 4. Okay, this one has the y-intercept at 4. This one has the y-intercept at 4. So does this one. So does this one. So I couldn't eliminate anything by the y-intercept. It looks like it has a, a dropping slope. Drops to run 1. So it looks like we're dropping to run one, drop to run one. So which one has the slope of dropping to? Well, they all have the slope of dropping to. So that didn't help me eliminate anything either. But then it needs to be a dashed line. So dashed means it has to be greater than or less than. That's the only two options. It does not have an equal. So let me eliminate the ones that have an equal. B has an equal and A has an equal. So I know it's not those two. Now, it is shaded above, okay? It's shaded above the line. So I want the greater than sign. So the greater than sign would be letter C is the only one that matches. So letter C is the correct answer. Y is greater than negative 2X plus 4. Now I need to pick a solution. And honestly, there are so many options. Uh, you can pick 3 comma 0, 3 comma 2, you can pick uh, 2 comma 1, as long as you don't pick anything on the dashed line. So no points, no points on the dash, on the dashed, dashed line. Okay, do not pick anything from the dashed line. The dashed line means do not include, okay? If it was solid, we could pick it from there. So to be safe, just pick anything on the sh any point on the shaded line. I am going to pick um, 3 comma 1. 3 comma 1. You can pick anything you want as long as it's in the, in the shaded area. Okay, Anything in the shaded area. All right. You should be able to do exactly the same thought process up here. You're looking for something that is dashed on both, not with equals. And you have something right here. This is y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. This is y is a dash, so it's greater than 4, something that is shaded above. So try to figure out this one on your own based on the idea we used here before. All right, number 11, it's a little bit easy. I'm going to do the harder one, which is 12. Okay? Now, number 12 shows that we have two of them. So if I can do two, then you can do just one over here on 11. I am going to first take care of the top one. This x over 3, it is the same exact thing as y is less than, instead of x over 3, I'm going to write 1 third times x. It is exactly the same thing. Okay? This is just saying x times 1, which is x, divided by 3. So I just split it up. And then I have my minus 1. Now I can see my y-intercept, and I can see my slope of rise 1 and run 3. So let's take care of this linear inequality first. So let's go to negative 1, which is right here. And then let's go 
up one, rise one, and run three. So rise one, and then run one, two, three. There you go. I have enough points. I can do backwards as well. Instead of rising one, I'm going to drop one. And instead of running one to the right, uh, running three to the right, I'm going to run three to the left. It's just doing the opposite of what I just did here, so it can keep the same pattern. Because this is a, uh, just a less than, does not have an equal, this is going to be a dashed line. So there is my dashed line. I make it a little bit bigger than my grid so I can see it. Now let's take care of the second one. I need the y by itself. So I'm going to divide everywhere by a negative 2. By a negative 2 here, negative 2 here, and negative 2. Once you divide by a negative 2, there's a rule that says you must switch the inequality. So this must be y is by itself now, because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a 1, and there's my 1y. Now I need to switch the inequality to make it greater than or equal to. And now 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2x, and a positive 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. If you are not sure, then use your calculator. I've been doing this long enough for many years that I, I understand this, but if you're kind of like, I'm, I'm not sure, well, then do it right here. 4 divided by, and then make your 2 negative, and then push enter. And there you go, you got your negative 2. Okay? So now we have a y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 4. We have a nice line there. It is a solid because we have an equal. Let's go to our y-intercept first of negative 4. So that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, right here. It's my negative 4. But I'm supposed to go drop 2 and run 1. So drop 2 and run 1 would put me a little bit outside of the, uh, my grid here. So let me work backwards. Instead of dropping 2 and running 1 to the right, I'm going to go up 2 and run 1 to the left. Let me do it again, up to run one to the left. Just the opposite of my slope. It was down to run one. I need to work backwards a little bit so I can have more points on the grid. Because it has the equal under, let's make a solid line. So there's my solid line. There we go. I got my solid line there. Sorry, I'm not using a straight edge to make it better. Now let's go back and shade it. This one over here, the top one, said y is less than, so I need to shade below my dashed line. I would be shading below here, gently shading below, okay? So I would gently shade below right here. Now, let's go back to the top one here, this one right here, the number two that we're working with. It says greater than my solid line. So greater would be on the right over here. We're going above the line. So I would lightly shade above. But I actually am looking for where the bold shades meet. And bold shades only meet right here in this area. Okay. So you need to, to after you're done graphing, taking care of dashed and solid, come back and think about your shading. Here's equation number one. We shaded below the dashed. But in, in, in equality number two, we shaded above the solid. So I need to be above the solid, but at the same time be below the dashed. The only part is right here, okay? You have to satisfy both of this inequality. So now I can pick up any point in the shaded area. I'm going to be right here to be safe. You can be right smack down in the middle to be safe. I'm going to pick 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 3. I just picked that, but you can pick any point you want to be safe, anything here. Can I pick a point on the solid line? Yes, but not on the dashed, okay? To be safe, just stay in the shaded area. All right, so hopefully that helps. Let's do another one. Now, number um, 14 is asking us to solve by graphing. I don't have inequalities, I have equations. So I'm just graphing an equation. And nicely, they are both in the y equals mx plus b form. So all I need to find is my y-intercept first. Let's take care of equation number one first. The y-intercept is a negative one. 
right here. That's the y-intercept because this is the y-axis. Now the slope is 3. So the y-intercept for number 1 was negative 1. And the slope is a positive 3. So that means I'm going to go up 3 and run 1 from the y-intercept. So 1, 2, 3. So from here, I counted up 3 spots. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1. So there we go. We're not dealing with inequalities here, it's just an equation. So I can go ahead, I'm going to do one more time, up 1, 2, 3, run 1. And I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite, drop 1, 2, 3, run 1. It follows a pattern of my line, so I can go ahead and draw my line straight through all these points. There's my line. And let me pick a different color here. Let me label this one number 2. And on number 2, the y-intercept is at 3. So I'm going to go to 1, 2, 3, where y equals 3 is right there. And then we're going to go to the slope. Now the slope is this hidden negative 1 right there. Drop 1 and run 1. Okay. So I'm going to drop 1, run 1, drop 1, run 1 a few times just to have a nice little pattern. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and draw the line straight through. This is equation, so we're making solid lines. And I'm looking for where both lines meet each other. That's what it means by solving by graphing. So I see that they both meet right here. The red dot and the black dot are on the top of each other. These two lines intersect at x equals 1, but y equals up 1, 2. y equals 2. So 1, 2. So that's what it means by solving by graphing when they give us two equations. They want to know where does two lines meet each other. Now here it says solve each system algebraically. Don't waste your time graphing. We wanted to see that you can do it algebraically. Circle whether the system has one solution, infinitely many, or no solutions at all. If I have one solution, I will get a point, x, comma, y. I'm going to get one answer for x, one answer for y. If I have infinitely many solutions, I'll get a true statement. Uh, if I have a no solution, we're going to get a false statement. All right? So let's see what we get here. Number 15, the x is all by itself. x equals 5y minus 8. So in the place of x, I can send 5y minus 8. I can use them interchangeably because x represents 5y minus 8. Or 5y minus 8 can be used in the place of x. So I'm going to use substitution because on the second equation here, this is equation number 1, in the second equation over here, I can substitute the y for, I'm sorry, I can substitute the x for this 5y minus 8, then it creates one equation with only y's. And we know how to solve that. So I'm going to grab equation number 2. I'm going to rewrite it. 3y plus 2. Instead of an x, I'm going to open a parenthesis. Equals negative 3. So that is equation number 2. But instead of an x, I left it blank. And instead of an x, I'm going to write 5y minus 8. I am substituting the x value inside right here. Okay, So there we go. Now we can solve this because this is just a one variable equation. We have 3y plus a positive 2 times 5 is a 10y. A positive 2 times a negative 8 is a negative 16 equals negative 3. If you are not sure, use your calculator. Now 3y plus 10y, they're the same terms. There are y's plus y's. I'm going to combine them. 3 plus 10 is 13 y's. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 16 to the side over here. Add 16. So my 13y is now going to add negative 3 with positive 16 is positive 13. Okay. So I combine the terms here and I added the 16 to the other side. A negative 3 with a positive 16 is positive 13. 
To get the y by itself, all you have to do is divide by 13 on both sides. And you get y equals 1. So we know that y equals 1. Let's see what we get for x. Come back to the equation number 1, which is the equation that you didn't use. I use equation number 2 here. So I'm going to come back to the equation number 1 here, and I'm going to find what x equals. x equals 5 times the y value, which happens to be number 1, minus the 8. Well, 5 times 1 is 5. Minus 8, that would equal a negative 3. And if you're confused, do it in your calculator. Okay, so x equals a negative 3. That means I got one answer for y, one answer for x. That means I have one solution. I would circle one solution. And I would write negative 3 for x, always comes first. And the y comes second, which is a 1. There we go. Okay? You can do exactly the same thing here. I showed you how to do 15. Now try to do 16. It's the same thing, but you're replacing the y value here with 5x minus 7. Try to solve it and see if you get either a true statement. A true statement would be 5 equals 5, uh, 7 equals 7, 0 equals 0. Those are true statements. False statements, let me write it over here in our little uh, study guide or cheat sheet. Okay, a true statement. So if you have one solution, you will get an x comma y. If you have infinitely many solutions, you'll get a true statement, such as 0 equals 0, okay, 5 equals 5. Those are true statements. And a uh, no solution you would get a false statement. So you would get a false statement su such as uh, 0 equals 10. That is a false statement. Okay, It does not equal. That is false. So look for that as you're solving this examples right here. All right? I got a true statement right here. I got a one solution. So not a true statement. Sorry. I got one solution. So I marked one solution. Let's try number um, 17 because it's a little bit more difficult. On number 17, I taught you in class, actually we solved this in class, how to get rid of fractions so we don't have to deal with these fractions right here. I'm going to make this bigger because I find this super tiny. I'm going to rewrite this problem right here, which is number 17. Um, I'm going to write x over 2 plus y over 4 equals 6, and then I have the 2x minus y equals 12. Okay, so I just made it bigger right here. Let's play with it for a second. There you go. Okay. So I want to get rid of fractions. I have two equations. I have equation number 1 and equation number 2. I like equation number 2, but equation number 1 is a little bit diffi difficult right here. Is it equation? Yeah, they're equations. Okay. So I want to get rid of this uh, fractions right here. I want to get rid of both of them at the same time. So we know this in class from practicing. We need to multiply by a number that gets rid of the 2 and get rid gets rid of the 4. We always pick the highest denominator here. So we chose 4. If I multiply every single one of these by a 4, the first fraction, the second fraction, and the, the value, the constant in the back, because that's how distribution works. So I would have a 4 times x divided by 2. So 4x divided by 2, 4 divided by 2 gives me a 2. So I would rewrite this equation as 4x divided by 2, because I'm multiplying, that would give me 2x. Now a 4y, because I'm multiplying 4 times y, it would be a 4y divided by 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 is just a 1y equals 4 times 6 is 24. So that is how you get rid of an fractions. If, if I had x over 3 plus y over 6 equals a 4, I would multiply everything here by my 6 value. Because I know 6 can be divisible by 3, 6 can be divisible by 6. Okay, so that's what you want to see is that you can get rid of these two denominators with one number. All right, so that was an if scenario. 
because the students like to see if cases. Okay, there we go. So back to our to our question over here. So I modified question number one. I'm sorry, equation number one. Now I don't have fractions. I don't need to modify to modify equation number two. So I still have equation number two, which is two x minus y equals 12. So I have a brand new set with no fractions. As a matter of fact, I can actually eliminate, use the elimination process if I add these two equations together. If I add them, I get 2x plus 2x, that makes it 4x. A positive y with a negative y adds up to 0, so eliminates those two. And 24 plus 12 is 36. And then you divide it by 4 on both sides, so you can get x by itself. You get that x equals 9. Okay? So now I know that x equals 9. I can come back to my equations, either the top one or the second one. It really doesn't matter. I'll pick the top one. And I replace the x with the 9. So let's go ahead and do 2 times, now I know what x is, is a 9, plus the y equals 24. So I just replaced the x value that we discover it is a 9. 2 times 9 is 18, plus the y equals 24. I am trying to figure out what is y. What do I add to 18 to get 24? Well, if you subtract 18 from both sides, you will know that the y is by itself here now, and 24 minus 18 is 6. Okay, so there we go. You got your answer, y equals 6. So the answer would be right here coming back to our work, x equals 9, y equals 6. So the answer for 17, we got one solution, x equals 9, and y is 6. I put it in parentheses to make it an order pair. This is a point in a shaded area. That's what this means. We found the point 9, 6 in the shaded area. Oh, I'm sorry, not shaded area, where both of these lines meet each other. Okay? If it is an equation, just like up here is where they meet each other. All right? So um, I think it's been uh, 32 minutes of video time. Let me see if I have a little bit more time for us to do one more problem over here. We did this in class. I'm going to get you started, and I'm hoping you're going to be able to finish. Let me also make it bigger here. I have 1.5x <coughs> plus 1.2y equals 0 0.6, and we have 0.8x minus 0.2y equals a number 2. All right, so let's go over here. In class, I also taught you how to... Uh, get rid of, uh, let me call it clear decimals. Okay. Before we were clearing fractions, we got rid of those those denominators. Now I want to do clear frac decimals. I don't want these decimals. I want to turn them into whole numbers, so I can um, deal with whole numbers is much easier for students. So a way to clear decimals is to find how many decimal places I have here. I have one decimal place one decimal place and one decimal place. If I could just move it over one decimal place, it would make this whole numbers. Well, moving it over is the same thing as multiplying by a one decimal place, that means tenths. Okay, that's in a tenths place. So if I multiply 10 times 1.5, I will get 15x. 10 times 1.2, I will get 12y. And 10 times 0.6, we'll get 6. So there we go. I changed something that was in decimals to whole numbers. I can do exactly the same thing here, but let's see what do I need to multiply by. I have one decimal place, one decimal place, and n n really no decimal places, but if you want to put a 0, you can. So all I need to do is multiply again by a 10. If I multiply this by a 10, this by a 10, I also have to multiply all of them by it. Okay, on the top, I multiply all of them by 10. Here, it has to multiply all of them by 10. So that would become 8x minus 2y equals 20. Please don't forget that you need to multiply all three items, okay? All three items by the 10. 
And now there you go. You have a brand new uh, set of equations that does not deal with decimals. So we have 15x plus 12y equals 6, and we have 8x minus 2y equals 20. When you look at this, now you have a brand new set. Try to figure out which variable do I want to get rid of. Would it be so nice if this was a negative 12? If it was a negative 12, I would be able to eliminate this too. It would add up to 0. Then let's make that happen. Let's multiply the top, everything here by a 6. If you multiply by a 6, you can multiply the 8 by a 6, the negative 2 by a 6, and the 20 by a 6. Okay? And then you'll be able to go ahead and finish eliminating one of these variables. I'm going to let you finish that. I got you started. You will have 15x plus 12y equals 6. Here we would have 48x minus 12y equals 120. Okay? Go ahead and finish this. I, I cannot finish because I need to, to go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, but go ahead and finish this, and you will be able to eliminate the y's, add up the x's, and finish from there. Okay? And then you'll be able to find your solution. See if you get one solution or infinitely many or no solutions at all. Mm -hmm. All right? I would like to move on. Unfortunately, we're running out of time here. But I would like to move on and help you at least get you set up for these problems. Then you can solve it and come and compare in class. The sum of two numbers is 14, 114. So I got to create an equation to represent this. I don't know these two numbers. I'm going to call them x and y. So if I grab x and add it with y, I get 114. Now let's create, that's my equation number one. Let's create a second one. And their difference is 32. So if I add them, I get 114. But if I subtract them, I get 32. Okay, so there, there you go. You have your two equations. You may add them together. As you can see, the y's will uh, add up to 0. And you can add your x's. Now, the students get confused with this. When I see an x plus an x, it does not equal just a 1x. If you have a 1x plus a 1x, it will equal 2x, okay? So finish solving this, 114 plus 32, that would be 146, okay? Finish from here, divide it by 2, solve for x, come back and find out what y will be, okay? Now let me help you with number uh, 20. Please continue this, all right? I'm leaving it up to you to continue and finish it. Sarah has 26 coins in her purse. All the coins are quarters and nickels. So quarters, I'm going to use Q, and I know that they are 25 cents. And nickels, I'm going to use letter N, and I know it is worth 0 0.05 cents. Okay? So, um, and they are worth $4.10. How many nickels does she have? She wants to know how many nickels. So let's go ahead and set up two equations. As you can see, we always set up two equations. Equation number one, let's do it how many, okay? How many does she have? Well, if we grab the quarters and add with the nickels, she'll have 26 of them. Now let's do one, a second equation about how much, okay? How much does she has? Well, 0.25 cents for each quarter plus 0 0.05 cents for the nickels, it will add up to $4.10. So there you go, you have your two equations. You can use the idea that I just showed you a second ago, how to get rid of decimals. You would have to move it by two places, that means you're multiplying by 100. You can use substitution or elimination method. I want you to try this one, and then come to class ready for us to discuss it and uh, review a little bit more, okay? I need you to try now. The concepts are the same. You just need to multiply it, uh, get rid of decimals if you want, find uh, which variable you want to eliminate, and choose one of the methods we practiced so far in this unit. So here, I'm gonna help you set up the last one. John paid $34, $34 for two algebra books 
and three geometry books. So this is my first sentence. I'm going to create an equation for this one right here. Okay? John paid $34 for two algebras. So I'm going to say two of the algebra books plus three of the geometry. So three of the geometry. And that equaled $34. Okay, I already used the $34. I already wrote a statement for this uh, equation for this statement. Now you need to create a second equation for the next statement. He paid $36 for two algebras and three geometries. So two, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Two algebra and three geometry. Two, and now this is for three algebras, three algebras and two geometry, plus two of the geometry. And he, play, he paid $36, okay? So I made one equation for the first sentence and one equation for the second sentence. How, uh, what is the cost for each of the books, okay? So you have your two little equations here. You choose which one do you wanna make your target variable here? Do you wanna eliminate the A's or the G's? If I want to eliminate the A's, I better multiply the top one by a number that will make the opposite of the, the, um, the bottom equation. If you ca I cannot make a 2 into a 3, but I can uh, think of a negative 6. I can make this a negative 6 and this a positive 6. So try to think of it that way. You could do the same thing for the, the G's. Okay? So try to solve this. You're going to have to multiply both equations by a different number and make the a's be opposite of each other. So try to solve it. We, we will review this in class some more. We'll go over these problems again in class. And we'll go over all of them if you want. And compare all of our answers and work with each other and review the rest of the, this, this packet. Okay? Good luck. Thank you.